Perfect. Oh, look at these curlies. Hey, welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. And greetings. Greetings. And today <laughs> we're going to be making sense of life through the fountain. It's a kind of surreal fantasy film about death. Actually, I think it's about love. I think I think it's really a love story. <laughs> you know? It's about love. It's about love. I mean, for sure, there's there's definitely love yeah. there. Well, I'll, I'll but explain. But I feel like it's about, like... I'll explain. Death and well, creation, tree same. of life. Yes, creation, rebirth, death, renewal. So, synopsis. The main, so hard. There's, there's three storylines that kind of intertwine, but the main one is kind of like present day where there is there's Tommy. Izzy and Tommy. Tommy. And Izzy Creel. Yeah, Thomas and Izzy. Uh, she's got a illness that uh, yeah. is creeping up on her tumor, I think. The husband is a brain surgeon, I think, and uh, he's trying to figure out a way to cure her her tumor so that she doesn't pass away that's like the main one so he's operating on monkeys and they're fun trying out different uh you know magical roots from trees in guatemala maybe that'll you know that'll yeah. help it start to heal the monkey maybe it'll heal her it also follows the story of the characters of her book that she's that she's writing she's writing a book it takes place uh during the spanish inquisition yeah. when spanish conquistadors went to explore central america and then the, the third storyline is kind of i'm not sure if it's like happening in his mind i feel like that's his mind right i don't think yeah. that's like an actual place yeah or, yeah or i the think future or something yeah i think that's it's his more, mind yeah where yeah. He's, it's kind of him in a bubble. In a in a bubble going a off to space with a tree that's that's Izzy, basically the the, the 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 Izzy tree. And he's trying to keep the tree alive and they're trying to get to Jabalba. Yeah. Just the Mayan afterlife in time so that they can be together again. Yeah. Yes, there are themes. There's definitely love involved because these two people are married, mm -hmm. um, Izzy and Tom. But I feel like the movie is about death and creation and how these how death and creation kind of like I don't know, like they, they go together. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> they go together. Yeah. Um, and go together like coffee and coffee cake. Do coffee cake go well with coffee? I don't know. I, don't I know. imagine they should. Well, I mean, I, I suppose they should. Yeah. That's the whole point, right? Yeah. With regard to death, right? Obviously, you're looking at death as a negative. There's lots of things that, like in the movie, for example, when you have the conquest. Conquistador. <laughs> Conquistador? Yeah. Conquistador. Conquistador. Conquistador <laughs> trying to find the, the tree of life. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, right, like you mentioned the Spanish Inquisition, right? Yeah. Izzy is the queen in this mm -hmm. period and her kingdom is under threat. She's writing a book about that era. But if you look at the book that she's writing, yeah. it actually parallels the yeah. present day reality. Yeah. Her life is under threat as the queen. Mm -hmm. Her life is under threat in the present day. And their love is also under yeah. threat at that time because when Tommy is Tomas during the Spanish Spanish Inquisition era, they are fiance and like, you know, with the ring, I think. I'm yeah. this is yeah. my assumption. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and oh. so she's so he goes off to to, to find the tree of life to save the kingdom and their love. And so in the present day, he's doing that, trying to preserve Izzy's life with this si with his science, mm -hmm. as well as their love, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. The bubble thing is mm -hmm. him kind of shifting towards accepting death. Yeah. People look at death as a negative, mm -hmm. you know? Um, they don't necessarily ever assess death as, oh, there's a silver lining, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a painful experience to see someone you love pass, mm -hmm. you know? It's just one of those things where you just, you're so trapped in that pain of it, which is, what he is he's trapped yeah. in the pain of it throughout the yeah. movie but then he's working through it in that abstract uh yeah. in his mind yeah. now is he yeah. being selfish through most of the movie in the sense that he is so determined to save izzy's life through all the different storylines but she's come to terms with it she's actually near the end when she faints i think at one point she was like i was honestly like feeling quite ready to if it had happened then i would have been okay with it i wasn't afraid i know you're very strong He's not really thinking, oh, I'm happy now. I'm at peace because my wife, who's criminally ill, will pass away. And knowing that she's at peace makes me happy. No, he's still fighting to the bitter end, even though she said, no, I'm okay. Like, why are you so, so obsessed with this still? Like, it's my time. It's okay. You know, we still had our time together. Well, so. I mean, I don't think that it's being, being selfish. I right. think, like, if you... I'm getting emotional. <laughs> I'm going to have to cut some stuff out. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't think he's being selfish. He's in love and in pain. You know, with Izzy, I think there's an assumption we can justifiably assume that at first it was hard for her because she says i'm now at peace yeah. you know she doesn't say i've always been she yeah. just says i'm not scared anymore yeah. i think her manuscript that she's writing mm -hmm. is her journey mm -hmm. to get, reaching that acceptance and right. she's trying to get him to reach that acceptance yeah. because she's like finish the book you yeah. know throughout the movie in his mind when mm -hmm. he's in the bubble we're always hearing finish it finish mm -hmm. it finish it finish it finish it. That's him hearing Izzy the whole time yeah. to finish the book, but he obviously doesn't want to because yeah. he's not ready to accept her death. Yeah. Finishing the book would be like, okay, Except I'm it. closing this chapter yeah. of my, the chapter of our life together. Yeah. And so I don't think he's being selfish. I think it's, it's fair for people to be sad yeah. for something yeah. bad happening to people they love. Yeah. We've talked before, you know, about kind of like whenever you're doing something or maybe someone is treating you on, in an unkind way, I get really upset about it. Right. But at the end of the day, we've also talked about that it's your journey. It's for you to deal with with right. this person and not me to be dwelling on it. And even though you're like, I'm okay, you you know, <laughs> we've had plenty of conversations like that where you're like, I'm okay, I'm not upset with this situation. And then I'm stressed out by yeah, it, no. even though you're completely at peace with it because it's just about love yeah. and the concern. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then where does it, maybe not become selfish on his end, but where does it become an unhealthy obsession? Because I think another part of the movie is accepting reality and enjoying the time that you can because um in all the situations like i think uh from the conquistador story to when he finds the tree of life and instead of putting on the ring when she says when you find the tree of life put on the ring we'll be together forever instead of doing that initially he looks down he's got a wound and he wants to use the sap from the tree heal that up and then he kind of gets maybe not greedy but he's like oh wow this really works and he starts yeah. drinking a bunch of it and then it makes him turn into a new vegetation basically and he dies and then isn't able to put the ring on and i think that's similar to instead of just enjoying that moment of like first think of putting the ring on enjoy the time that you have and maybe you might bleed out but enjoy the time that you know you can be like hey now we're one in a sense we've, we've joined with the rings right same thing with the present day is he keeps asking hey it's the first snow we always go out and enjoy it and he's like no i'm busy i'm trying to fix you know what's going sure on you with you die. make sure you don't die and so then they he misses out on that time with her take a walk with me I have too much work. It's the first snow we always... They're waiting on me. Come on, Tommy. Please, Izzy. I'm sorry. I am. I'll see you tonight, okay? Right? Yeah. And then in the end, he finally decides to take that route of enjoying the first snow with her, right? And then that's kind of what allows him to finally you know, let go of, of her passing and everything, right? Yeah. And then same thing even with the, the psyche kind of bubble Javolva storyline is he keeps fighting, interacting with her where this kind of apparition or this image of her shows up instead of he keeps getting angry with her or ignoring her or being like, you know, I'm trying to get us up to the spot we need to where you can be reborn, but then the tree ends up passing away right before. And instead of maybe enjoying that moment with her there, he, he's focused on keeping the tree alive and then you know, it doesn't even end up staying alive long enough, so. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think that's also realistic to life because death, you know, there's finality in that. You, I'm getting so, like. Did she time? <laughs> Did she time? There's two types of death, right? Like a, that long drawn out death when you know, you know someone's gonna like, like this with terminal yeah. illness or that very instant death. Sometimes maybe someone gets hit by a car, like you yeah. never, ex and they were perfectly healthy. There was ever never any inkling of a death looming. But I think in both instances, there's a lot of denial, you know, in that time. Mm -hmm. And when you're in denial, you are prolonging a pain. You're mm -hmm. pro prolonging something that's already a, a painful experience, right? Yeah. So the person is, you know that the person is going to, is going to pass, but then you're, you're instead, instead of what you're saying, like trying to enjoy them while they're still here, mm -hmm. your life is just full of sorrow. Basically yeah. you're, you wake up and you just kind of like, maybe you don't even want to see them. Sometimes when th someone is that sick, people I've heard say, I just didn't want to see my mom or my sister in that kind of position. It hurt <clears throat> me so much. You knew that they aren't going to be there anymore. It's not easy when you know that someone's going to pass yeah. to say, okay, well, I'm going to do as much as I thought yeah. I possibly can now they're gone and you're angry about it yeah. and you're hurt by it and then you think of because when when you have those um shots of him saying no to her yeah. inviting him to go out to 
you know, watch the first snow as they always do. It seems to me it's kind of like him. It, it I thought, could it be one of those things where you're looking back at the things that you didn't do? I right. wish I had done that. Right. I didn't do that. And you're angry at yourself, right? Mm. Because that's the thing. When you're not accepting stuff, there's a lot of stuff that's going on. Either you're thinking about how unfair it is that this yeah. person passed away, or you're just rid riddled with guilt. Right. The guilt of the things that you should have done and that you didn't do. And mm. there's a lot of that there, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so I don't necessarily think that there's a selfishness ever, at all on his right. end i just think it's there's a sadness and a desperation right. for this person that she love he loves yeah. and isn't ready to let go of and in terms of like the creation piece i think even in those instances of death that's looming and a death that's instant i think there's creation in both in this in, in mm -hmm. those cases because whenever you have someone who's terminally ill and you know that's they're going to pass and it's not an instant thing sometimes that could be a blessing for the people that are going to be left behind yeah, right. things that you never said to this person yeah. that you know is going to leave yeah because they're hard to say mm -hmm. but then when death is you know really like imminent yeah you start to realize that doesn't he what, what whatever fear or doubt yeah. you had it doesn't even matter. This yeah. person's not going to be here anymore. What do you want to do? You want to live with the guilt yeah. of not having said anything? Right. Um, and so that's the thing that kind of like gives you the impetus to say the things that you never wanted to say. That is an opportunity. Some people take that opportunity and some people decide not to even face that reality. Like, yeah. because having that conversation with the people that you love, who you know this person is going to die, that's you accepting that they're going to die. And it's not easy to do that. Yeah. So then you don't want to even right. think about what kind of, what things have I not said to this person? person because that's acceptance isn't it what things have i not said what hurts would i want, want this person to give me closure over for example before they die what kinks do i want to iron out in our relationship before they pass doing that means you accept that they're leaving and if you haven't accepted that and that's i think an act of creation because it's a creation in the sense of it, it gives you an opportunity for something meaningful because when they're gone once you've said the thing that you that were weighing on your on your heart you you had the opportunity to say them. There are just certain things that are fine there that you're free of yeah. guilt around. But if you don't say those, you are facing the sadness, the pain of the person dying, as well as the pain and the guilt of not saying stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's kind of giving yeah. you a whole new relationship with the person. Yeah, the creation of a much stronger connection. Yeah. yeah, creation here isn't necessarily like obviously when we're talking about when he's Tomas during the Spanish Inquisition era, like he becomes a tree of life, right? Mm -hmm. Because instead of the the alternative ending where yeah. he gets killed, yeah. the guy realizes, the Mayan chief or yeah. realizes, oh wait, you are the, the first father mm -hmm. and then le lets him live. And then he goes to the tree. Because in the, remember Izzy when he's talking about the Mayan book says, well, the first father, what happened? He had to die yeah. for people to be born, you know, yeah. for the world yeah. to be created. And the world came out of his out body. Out of his body, yeah. yeah. And that's what's, what happens in, yeah. in that story, yeah. right? Creation is like an opportunity for something yeah. that you didn't take before. Yeah. The creation in this story wasn't a new birth. It wasn't is he coming back to life it was him finishing the chapter right because when he then becomes the first father and mm -hmm. becomes the roots yeah. to the earth yeah that's him coming to terms yeah. with the death yeah. accepting the death and then finishing the story yeah, yeah. which i think is, which the... is that's the creation the yeah. creation of the last chapter yeah and yeah. i think she wrote the book partly you know autobiographically because it's something that she was experiencing so it was kind of her therapy her way of i think accepting her situation. Yeah. Um, so she was writing it both for herself, but also I think she was doing it for for Tom. him. Yeah, and, because when yeah. he's when they're in the hospital, I, yeah. I totally agree with that. Because yeah. when they're in the hospital, she's like, "Here, this is my book. I have yeah. to. You have to finish the last chapter. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to finish the last chapter." He's like, "But I don't know how the story ends." And she's like, "Don't worry, you will." Yeah, it was her journey. She already went through her journey of yeah. accepting. Yeah. I think through that book. So he also has to go through his own journey once he once she's gone. Yeah. I, I like the part too of during her funeral, one of Tom's colleagues talks about how really you could look at life as just one big preparation towards death, basically. Oh, yeah. Like you spend your whole life getting ready for when you do pass away, getting to a point 
where you will pass peacefully and gracefully. And she, and she says, a lot of people don't even ever get to that point. Most people go kicking and screaming into death like they did when they were born. Izzy, she went gracefully. Like she was ready, she was accepting, she was at peace. Few people get to that point. The way you live your life yeah. will determine yeah. How, yeah, exactly. you, how, how you go into death. How whole and complete you feel and how, yeah. yeah. How you go into death, yeah. right? She lived her life in a way where I accept death. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The choices you're making in your life every single day determined firstly how satisfied you are with life and yourself if you truly are satisfied with your life and yourself when death comes you know it's like well i lived I, I lived fully i got all of the things that i really that really mattered so when when death comes it's like okay yeah it's like greeting fine. a friend yeah, yeah i got what i needed yeah. you know and i'm very grateful for that yeah but if you aren't then yeah you're you're kicking and screaming you don't yeah. want to die because you're like all of those opportunities yeah. All of that, I, I wish I had, I need, yeah. I want that. I don't, you know, yeah. I don't want to die. I'm not ready to die yet. I still yeah. have so much to accomplish. Yeah. But the reality is we have so much time mm -hmm. every single day. We do. We have the, the chance to live the life that we want. Yeah. But for whatever reason, we just don't. In the one story in his psyche, he accepts his kind of oblivion. But really, it's the acceptance of, of the situation. Yeah. Him and his wife. Yeah. Definitely, there were tears for me. Yeah, this movie is really great. <laughs> it's a perfect depiction of how people are affected by yeah. by death yeah. or the ending of something. I would say. And all the people that are are feel like he's going too far, Tom, but they also understand what he's going through. So mm -hmm. it's, they they kind of you're kind of stuck. Like, what do you do? You can't really say that you shouldn't. You can't tell the person what they should or shouldn't feel. Exactly. You know, I think it really explores death and coming to terms with it and finding the light in it. As he talks about in the story, she uses the way of saying that even in the darkest night, I think there's that oh, yeah. morning light that, that at some point there'll be that shimmer or that breaking yeah. of morning light, you know, and that's yeah. the thing. And it's a continual thing. It'll get light and it'll start to get dark and then it'll get light again. And same thing with death and rebirth and happiness and sadness and it's always a fluctuation of everything so yeah with the movie I, I was thinking about the people in my life the relationship in my life basically kind of being obsessed about am I relating as honestly and as holistically and as lovingly as I as I would like and I think I know that a lot of it is also that I do have to have a bit of a, a fear of, of death right like and I think sometimes you have that wanting to control a lot of things. And so I've kind of obsessively found myself thinking a lot about what do I do right now as the, as as they are alive to make sure that when they're gone, I don't have these feelings of if I wish they could come back or I wish I had done ABC. In the movie, there is that depiction of I wish she could come back. I could, you know, because he's like, death is a disease. I can cure it. Fierce determination yeah. to bring her back. And it's insane, you know, because you can't do that. Yeah. But it's, it's also very honest yeah. to the truth of, I think, what happens when people pass away. Mm. All rationale, yeah. especially in the moment yeah. or when it's, you know, like it's near the, the yeah. death. It's, yeah. it's, it's gone. Yeah. Fear of death's definitely up there for me. It's probably probably the highest, too. I don't have too many fears, although usually you don't realize the f what fears you have until you're faced with it. Yeah. So yeah exactly yeah so some of the stuff that we had to to think about to chew on mm -hmm. from the fountain but uh what do you guys think have you seen it you know what's some of the stuff that you you got from it let us know leave a comment recommendation leave leave something share your thoughts share your thoughts on our thoughts yeah what are the really what are the fears fear of death. my fear is of not living my life right. in a way where when people i love pass away yeah I will have regrets. <laughs> ah, that's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, I'm always trying to figure out every single day how to live how do I live my life yeah. in that way? Yeah. How do I engage? Yeah. How do I cultivate relationships yeah. with the people I love? I like that. Where when yeah. when I go, they will just feel like, ah, oh, thank God. Yeah. We had that time together, right. you know? Is it is it actually a fear of death or is it a fear of living an unfulfilled life? Yeah. Yeah. Until next time. That's right. Bye.